Stoked, the podcast. Welcome, Stoked, the podcast. We are recording our second episode. Super stoked to be here. We're recording from Backyard Bay, Salt Rock. Coming live from the studio Loop Records. You, hey, good Jack? times, good times. You're stoked, Matt. It's nice to see Always you. Stoked. You too, buddy. Donkey, I'm man. your host, Matthew. This I'm is shock. Host. Shock. <laughs> and yeah, we um, we're a cool podcast, and Josh's going to tell you all about us. Yeah. The underground scene, things that get us stoked, uh, community guys just getting involved, bringing people together. Uh, we hope you learned something from this. Please go and like and subscribe and do all that fancy stuff. And also, even more important than that, we got some really dope uh, guests. So go and support them with what they're busy doing. Um, this, this will hopefully inspire you guys um, to get involved even here. Um, so yeah, just, just pumped. Stacked. 100% Jacques, you nailed that one on the head. So yeah, with uh, our further ado, we have our first guest on, and it's Small Step Surfing. Guys, how are you doing? Yeah, okay. good. Thanks for having us today. Man. Stoked hey. to be here. Awesome, guys. Awesome. We're stoked to have you here. We're so stoked here that you're making others stoked in this life. And yeah, we're just so, so stoked to have a cool conversation with you, gents. So Bloody heroes. Us. Bloody <laughs> heroes. <laughs> I'll tell you that those. much. These are those are I'll the best tell you those. that much. I might just send you home with these eyes. Yeah, <laughs> just to <laughs> sort your life out. We, can, we can turn them around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most definitely. With surfing, eh? Exactly. Come on. That's it. So yeah, guys, tell us what Small Step Surfing is all about. So Small Step Surfing is a program about mental well-being and positive youth development focused around surf therapy so we take the kids from at-risk areas in the neighboring communities and we try and help them overcome some traumatic experiences that they may have or just you know day-to-day issues that they don't have anyone to bounce off of with so we try and become coach mentor almost like a parent figure to them and allow surfing to create that common ground Mm. so we all surf together we all love surfing so in the water, we've got nothing to think about except being stoked. And that's amazing work. So we're trying to bring to now. these kids. And so rad. Love it. I like what you said there about the parent stuff because uh, some of us don't have lighties because we don't qualify because the cops will arrest us. <laughs> so I think, but I think it's important mm. that we understand that um, just because you're not a parent doesn't mean that you aren't a dad in some way. You know, where the lighties are around us and mm. some some form of encouragement, and we all had a quite a kiff kiff upbringing in that. So. Um, I, I was watching your videos, uh, your little promo video. I think something that stood out for me is how the lighties were saying how safe they feel when they're surfing with their mates. You guys creating a safe space. What's that? What, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, safe space is a massive word in small steps. You know, a lot of what we do is trying to create a safe environment for these kids to feel comfortable. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. almost like what your western style society will have a psychiatrist you know we these kids don't have access to that so we try and come in and create that that bond with them so they can feel free and you know sort of comfortable to chat to us and you know josh is there every single saturday and the main thing for us is consistency if they see we're consistent that already creates that safe space that we're talking about yeah yeah that's great and i mean the the lives that some of these kids are living out there i mean just the pure poverty that south africa in general is is all about it's 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 quite scary the crime rates and everything that these kids have to deal on a daily day basis so yeah that safe space 100 percent. you bring mm. such a great atmosphere you you're getting them stoked. These kids are now living for surfing. I mean, that's what I really got in that video. You know, the kids are waking up. All they can think about is surfing. Yeah, Instead I of, you know, turning to yeah. the streets, turning to maybe a few bad friends that are involved in some bad stuff, these kids are getting out in the water and you're helping them now to get there. And that's that's pretty remarkable. So, no, we, we'll back you up 100%. Um, any of our viewers, please go like, share, and comment on in, on Small Step Surfing social media as well. I mean, we'll post them down in the bio below. And, uh, yeah, just uh, put the word out there and what the great job these guys are doing. Yeah, please so do. So I really want to talk, you guys, talk to you guys about the actual mental health, the f- emotional part of what these kids are going through and, and the physical part, like where they were and now where they were and now 
you know, where you have taken them. I mean, Im- Im- mentally, it's helping them. Emotionally, they're dealing with all the struggles, right, that they have on a daily day basis. And um, physically, they're just getting fitter. Like I said, they're not ending up on the streets. They're getting out there. They're working. And we all know a clear mind we can do a lot better things with. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. We're keeping them too busy to do anything else. Like, yeah. By the time they leave us, they're so tired. So, I mean, they <laughs> can't great. do anything else. Is this like a weekly Joel or how often every are you guys Saturday. doing? Every yeah. Saturday. Every Saturday, half past eight, we start our program. But we're usually there around five in the morning, have a free surf before. And then, you know, not all of our kids can independently surf. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So from half past eight, myself, Jürgen, the coaches, we'll jump in the water with the Learn to Surf crew and get them up and, and riding and other, mm. otherwise do other things in tidal pool that all focus around mental health. And, the, and obviously, the swimming aspect, those obviously got to learn they to have swim to know as how to well. Swim first, yeah. Because no. I, I, I can imagine when you come and load up the O's in the morning, like everyone is keen. Well, that's yeah. Everyone's but, keen. But not everyone can swim. And that, you put them in the water and half of them, well, not half of them, but there'd be a, a good amount of them that the moment they come off the board, it's panic stations. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you need mm. the coaches to be there to try mm. and help them out because they'll jump on a board before mm. they know how to swim. And There's you guys so much stoke around the surfing side of things. Definitely. Yeah. 100%. And you guys being surfers yourselves and like being in the water constantly, you know how important it is not to panic in those situations. Exactly. I mean, yeah. You could really find yourself in some some deep situations and the best way to to handle them is to remain calm. So, yeah, no, that's great. Eh? But you know, Matt, you, you had mentioned earlier about physical and mental health and, and you know, obviously seeing the change in these kids. But we, we track um, attendance. We track... We do certain um, WHO wellness scales that mm. that measure mental health in, sure. in anybody. It's from ages eight and up. Um, it's a worldwide scale done by the WHO. And basically, we do a pretest with the kids when we start our, our yeah. program for the year. And that kind of tells us where their mental state is at in, at any given time or at that time. That's we run our 16-week yeah. program with the kids, yeah. all focused on different coping mechanisms. And then we do a retelling or a retest and that gives us our, our qualitative data at the end of the day. You know, how well you guys are doing, how, how the kids the are responding. working, exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And the, the... Show that back to the parents, how do they react? Well, a lot of it is from the parents. You know, we've, we sent those tests home and we've got, you know, written statements from the parents saying that the kids are more respectful at home. They, sure. Man, they have become right. kids again, you know. Even these kids school have, grades are going yeah. up, you know. That's yeah. amazing. And that just shows like being outdoors instead of being confined in, in indoors. Exactly. Like, exactly yeah. That's also and making meaningful relationships, you know, and, yeah. and having people to talk to when you have issues is, mm. is I think we overlook how important that is. Yeah. yeah. And for these kids, like Yogs was saying, they don't really have many people that they can look up to and speak to and, and count on that exactly. every Saturday mm. Those are going to be there. Exactly, yeah. Load your O's up. Hit your surfboards. Yeah. Get ready. Yeah, I was right. just stoked. Yeah. 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 He's making them stoked. We, we making all know what it feels like to be looking forward to a gig or look forward to a weekend away. That anticipation, that excitement that it builds. I just can't stop talking about it. And you know, it's something to look forward to. And I think the I think what makes it so lucky is that, is that, is that safety again, eh? Surf with someone that you know, so surf, surf, surf with someone that's got your back. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Right. And so. all of these kids have become such close mates. They're like a little family. Yeah. Everything they do is together. So from the eight-year-old kid will be chilling with the 14-year-old kid. And they'll all be chilling with the 17-year-old kids. Yeah. You know, there's no... None of the you're not cool enough to hang yeah. with me type of thing. You know, we don't know quite what it is in their day-to-day life. But when they come to us, they're a little family and everyone looks after each other. Nobody is bullying each other or picking on each other. Yeah, mm. Everybody is looking out for each other. And that's what we've been trying to create the whole time. That's great. So you're making like a bond between every single one of you. You know? yeah. You're building a community. You're building the trust. You're building uh, the honesty between each other and transparency, the loyalty. Yeah. I mean, there's so many aspects to it. Mm. The sense of community. You know, there's hundreds. I belong here. Exactly. These are my yeah. bras. So, I yeah. belong here. This is my beach. These exactly. are my. These. This is my ocean where I come and surf. Yeah. You know, there's just as much stoke to have those kids in the water mm. as there would be to have, you know, Jordy Smith in the water. You yeah. Know, it doesn't doesn't matter to them. They just want to surf. Yeah. That's awesome. Man. And the, the getting to hang around with like different age groups. So, yeah. that's, I think that's something at school that's that's definitely lacking. <laughs> the the matric or whatever they call them these days is definitely not trying to 
coach the oh, that comes into high school for yeah. the first time, you know? Mm. But that's like skateboarding, it's like rock and roll, it's like surfing, it's these underground cultures. Um yeah, it doesn't matter what background you come from. Um, it's it's the Stoke that brings the O's together yeah. and and builds that community and stuff. And then they and then they bring the guys. They bring the guys in. Man. That's and it. And all of our coaches, our people who have participants that have come through the program, yeah. so they've shown us promise, and we've in turn shown them that we trust them and allow them mm. to become coaches. And so they become the inspiration for the younger kids. Yeah. So they see, yes, the Stoke is not sitting there causing yeah. cuck on the weekends yeah. you know he's he's there he's surfing and he's actually taking time to yeah. help me in what i'm doing yeah so they're finding they're finding role models you're creating role exactly. models for them and that's so important in your day-to-day living especially when you're growing up as a kid when you don't have a father figure when you don't have a mother around i mean some of these kids come really come from hardship mm. you know and uh th- that's great work what you guys are doing you, you're giving them something that they didn't have and it's just going to help them to progress in life dr- dramatically. Yeah. I mean, mm. hugely. There's a study done. I'm, <laughs> I've heard about many studies done. I couldn't quote anything off the top of my head. Mm. But I'm sure you guys have been involved with talking uh, of guys overseas. So, yeah, tell us a little bit more about the guys overseas that you're collaborating with. What's, what's going on there? So... When was it? 2019, we were invited by Ways yeah. of Change. So Ways of Change awesome. operating out of Cape Town, they've been running for 13 years and they probably, or well, they are the forerunners in surf therapy in the world. So the biggest surf therapy organization in the world, I'd say, is oh, Ways of Change at this point. Yeah. So they invited us to come through for a training seminar. In that training, training seminar, we formed what's, part, what's called the Wave Alliance. So there's 18 organizations around the world which form a similar curriculum based around mental health. Mm. and broadly positive youth development so taking Mm. kids in at-risk areas and then showing them the light or opening the door and allowing them to go through so that's pretty much what they what they taught us and some of the you know i wasn't able to attend i work abroad and during COVID, i was stuck so i was lucky enough to have a good mate like Josh. Well done, Josh. Yeah, Fly the flags, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> cleaning, the, the, cleaning the old flagpole and hoisting the flag. So Josh, sending a video to I you. Pulled him, yeah. <laughs> pulled him on board and I said, look, bro, I can't make this training. This is the organization. You know about small steps. Yeah. You're my mate. I trust you. Mm. Please go for this training. And then we c- let's form... You know, let's form a board of directors. Yeah, let's absolutely. create a non-profit company. And mm. so accountability and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's quite a overnight. little bit. It, I was there for two days and I phoned Jörgs up and I said, Jörgs, I'm quitting my job. This is what I need to do. You know, at the time that my job didn't allow me Saturdays. Yeah. And Jörg said, I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I sent you. you know, I'm uh, done so with we, the day. This Mission is what we're doing. We've got to help these kids. I mean, it was, it was life-changing for me. It was amazing. That's amazing. We'll bring Jürgen on again if you guys want to learn how to quit your jobs. Yeah. We'll bring Jürgen on again. He'll do a little 10-pointer with you as you can go tell your boss to yeah, go stick get Stick with me. I'll show you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 He's going to show you the stupid one now. <laughs> hey, but, but you could also, because, because there's that, that network now, you could um, then just slot in if, if, say, the opportunity came to, to join one of the guys overseas, you could then slot into that program. You know, I guess your, your language barrier might be a little bit of a problem or whatever, but I'm sure there's always doing it in like Oz and the States yeah. and mm. shit like that. So I mean, if that opportunity came. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's 18 organizations around the world. So what we're trying to form eventually is some sort of exchange between us. So yeah, people nice. can come from all around. I mean, there's programs in Senegal, there's programs in Central America, there's programs in South Africa even that are yeah. part of it. And we all have a little WhatsApp group where we bounce ideas back and forth. So yeah. let's say we're having trouble with something, we'll put it on the group and then someone says, yes, yeah, I dealt with that last month, you know, cool, this is what I did, send you yeah. all the documentation yeah. to assist you. And yeah. So we've got a nice network of people, a really awesome network of people that assist us in everything we do to try and make a change. Man. And if you shit on your back end, those can fluke you as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> a little bit of constructive criticism. That's uh, yeah. 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 You guys are, you guys are rocking. And I, and I hope you guys are super proud of, of what you guys are doing and, you know, like like looking forward to. But, uh, you know, I've I've done a little bit of like, I don't know if you want to call it charity work or anything. But uh, when I was doing that kind of thing, 
um, I learned the most from those that I was helping. Um, so mm, any like yeah. dope dreams or anything that you've learned mm. from the lighties that they've shared with you is, what's, um, what's, what have they done to make you guys dope? You know, like, or, yeah, what have you learned from them? That's yeah. pretty much what Chuck's saying. Right? Like most of, I mean, over the last couple of years, Josh has spent most of the time mm. with him. The small times that I've come in, it's just, they're, they're stoke. Hey? Like it sounds so cliche to say, but yeah. mm. the fact that they're there on a Saturday and those kids don't even think about it. They'll, if they get to the beach, they grab a board, they go to the, the water and they check. Okay, cool. They surf. Let's yeah. go. We're in. You know, yeah. there's no if, buts, wise, maybes, <laughs> or yeah. I'm lazy. The or, simple stuff. Yeah, there's this footy game on. I need to go and watch it. Yeah. They don't care. It's about, they want to surf. They want to enjoy themselves. And I'm pretty sure Josh can give you a lot more insight yeah. into mm. the kids' day to day. So, I mean, he's been with them for the last two years every Saturday. So, yeah, I mean, you said it was a, a life-changing experience for you in the beginning. I mean, that's that's pretty remarkable because it, to me, it sounds like it was a spiritual life-changing experience. You know, you, you, you grew it from an internal aspect, you know, and you just like getting stoked on seeing what, uh, how you can help others, you know? Yeah. So yeah, Josh, tell us, tell us a bit more about like, what have you learned? Right? Yeah. Like, what have they taught you? Jeez. Well, I mean, if it wasn't for, let me put it this way. When I, when I arrived in Cape Town, first meeting we had with, before we started any training, they just said, you know, what, what burning questions do you mm. guys have? What are your, what are your burning questions? This was, was posed to us by Waves for Change. And, you know, we had a bit of time to think about it. Basically, what do you want answered out of these two weeks, this two week training course, you know, yeah. and mine was literally turning passion into implementation. Yeah. And I think I went there, um, yeah. very unself-confident. What's the word? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I was, yeah, I just, I didn't have enough self-confidence in being able to pull off something like this. Now you, you, you messing with people's lives, not messing if you do it correctly. But you are, you, you have these kids' mental well-being in, your, in the palm of your hands, you know. Yeah. Mm. And um, after the two weeks, I mean, it was definitely answered. I was equipped with what I needed to run it. But you still have that self-doubt the whole mm. time. Mm. And I think just getting there with these kids, having them literally just being so stoked that someone actually cares about them and is there. And we spoke about consistency earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that made an impact on those lighties is that we said we we're going to be there at X time on X day and we were there every single time yeah. without fail. And that's that started to change things for the kids. Mm. And they, they realized that it's not just someone who's coming here and says, okay, cool, I'm going to be here. They're there for a month and they don't see them for six months. They come yeah. back for a day and then they're gone for another three months. Yeah. We were there every single day. Well, Josh, every, every, I mean, Josh drives to their houses and yeah. picks yeah. each kid up from their house. So there's a good 30, 45 minute process of him collecting each child. And so, yeah. 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 you know, we don't expect them to come to us. We go to them. And we but why would you not go and pick up your mates, eh? Exactly. <laughs> I think sometimes That's we. Well said, John. <laughs> <laughs> Very like, well said. Eh? Like the 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 separation and shit. Like it it gets in it, it gets insane. I mean, I you know I grew up in the Lipopo province and the skateboarding O's couldn't hang out with the rollerbladers <laughs> oh, yeah, and they yeah. couldn't. Hang out. We were like, there's so <laughs> little of us in yeah. this shit old town. There's so little of us. We have to stand together. Yeah, exactly. We have to stand together and eventually become like this small little gang that just no one wants to muck with. But we're like the nicest guys. We just want to skate. No yeah. yeah. We've got the coolest town. Like yeah. We've got everything you need. We've yeah. got bloody trails just out here. We've got the ocean just here. We yeah. are literally three hours touching distance of the most beautiful parks in South Africa. So Absolutely. why wouldn't we utilize the beautiful area and the community that comes with it? Yeah, 100%. you. Something I really want to touch on is like the way you going out there and collecting them. You making surfing accessible for them. I mean, yeah. some of them really can't get to the beach, mm. and yeah, I really love that part of what you guys are doing. You know, you getting right in there, you getting involved, you're getting submerged. You you making a dream a reality for these guys. You got to yeah. climb into their lives. Hey, you yeah, know? We, we don't want to. Sure just sit from the outside and give advice you know we want to yeah. show them that okay cool you banged up your knee i'm going to be there next to you i'm going to take you to the hospital i'm going to make sure everything's sorted type of thing you know that exactly like you said in the beginning the parent role mm. you know someone that's there that actually cares about you, mm. you know, that's i think goes a lot further than just the simple act of collection or or finding that fight you know going to the house to, to collect them yeah 
you know, showing that we care goes a lot further. It's eh? huge. It's huge. It's massive. And those that are going to get involved, and this is why I think we're going to always encourage the viewers and the listeners to get involved with the guys that we are, that we're getting on board, because it's going to change your life more than, more than you're going to change a lot. A lot mm. that lives in a township, you know, that is on a constant learning expedition. Like, you know, he doesn't know, he has no like promise of tomorrow. He doesn't know where his yeah. next child is coming from. He doesn't even know like whether his parents are coming home. You know what I mean? Never mind, you know, getting hooked up with a surfboard. Um, how's the, how are the surf, how the surfboard? Has every light you got a board and they're sharing boards? What's the vibe there? So we've got, uh, we, Ways for Change gave us 10 learn to surf boards. Oh, um, soft tops and so our, our learn to surf side is is sorted there we got uh, boards fins leashes uh, fins over time have kind of just smashed up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As Whoever, whoever's eating fins out there yeah. we are gonna catch you and we are gonna bless yeah. you yeah. <laughs> that so um, if your thing if your equipment's getting damaged so so much and you know it's hard to keep up with demand because you are getting a lot of kids involved I mean, where can the public help you guys, really? To be honest, um, Jurgs and I have been having this discussion and uh, we've kind of been like, we need to back off from saying that we need funding, yep. you know. But at the end of the day, we've got boards, we, we have fins, spares and things like that that we can fix up. But what we want the, the community to, to entrust in us is that if they give funds over, we're going to use it to the better mm. of these, yeah. these mm. kids. And I think that's where people start to mm. worry about handing over funding and we haven't mentioned funding at all sure. we've said yeah bring boards now we've got fifty thousand boards that some of them are way too big for the kids yeah. and probably will be until they they 30 40 yeah. you know yeah so we that's our thing is is it's we actually just need funding and then yeah. we can figure out what we need what we're short of yeah. you know we've got the coaches to pay food transport there's yeah. there's a lot of expenses that goes into it so if yeah. and if people can't afford yeah Make chow for the kids yeah, on a Friday. Go, yeah. It's 30 lattes. Yeah. Make sandwiches. Yeah. You, can, you only have to surf once yeah, to know it. that there's nothing that makes you... Okay, maybe two things. There's nothing <laughs> that makes you hungrier than surfing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's, <laughs> just want like a yeah. big yeah. map after. Can so. we not just do a <laughs> little, cut, little floaty know? at the back there yeah. with a couple of sandwiches? I need to drink some. By the time I finally get to backline, I can actually have a chow as well. So, I mean, but, on but, the Saturday, that's... What we give the kids, you know, we, I can't have it. I don't have it in me to send those kids home on an empty stomach. You know, like you said, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. So we feed them on the Saturday. We go and collect them. We drop mm. them off. You know, and that happens with consistency. And the only way that keeps happening is through funding. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of our, those are our two big expenses at this point is transport and food. And the, and the child. Yeah. But I think it's also, I think it's a val valid thing that you say there. If I bring you, if I bring you some chow, and you always don't need that chow at that moment. You know, it becomes tricky because now this food's going to go off, and maybe it's something that I could have contributed. But I think we need to also challenge ourselves and say, you know, the reason why I'm giving food is because I don't actually trust. Well, then it's not a gift. <laughs> no. you, I don't give you a phone and like a month later I'm phoning you and like, hey, Josh, are you using that phone? How much SMSs have you sent? <laughs> you know, like if you're going to give a gift. Yeah, those are always like, you can't give homeless people money, eh? They're just going to go to drugs. What, like you? you yeah, like, exactly. like drugs like you. <laughs> so when you, when you give that cash to that homeless, oh, let that oh make a decision what he, want, what he wants to do with that cash. Give them the money yeah. and then let them decide yeah. what they want to do with it. If you think mm. it's a dope initiative, mm. give them the money. If you don't have the money to give, then maybe go and join them and maybe you can become a coach or whatever. But give the O's the cash so that they can use those funds because funds can sit in a bank account. It doesn't go fraught. Mm. It could actually do interest or whatever. So all you Bitcoin O's, get involved. Get mm. involved. Mm -hmm. O's, I think we have sucked the stoke right out of you. So Never. what we're planning to do is Never. we are harvesting stoke to take over the world. Oz, it's a, been yeah. it's been just so yeah, dope so having you guys here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we appreciate it. Much, um, one day when you guys take over the world, please take us with you guys. Go and like, subscribe, check them out. It's been a dope <coughs> episode. Look after yourselves. Love each other. And keep the stoke up. Does it? You! I'm feeling kind of like stoked.